My PPFD at the canopy level is about. Hey everyone, today we're talking all about grow lights and how much light and what type of light your houseplants need. So back behind me here, I have a measurement stick hanging off one of my grow lights. This is the Spider Farmer, no affiliation, this is not sponsored, but this is just the grow light I use. It's made by a brand called Spider Farmer on Amazon and it is an LED mixed spectrum grow light. It has a variety of pink and white and different LEDs mixed in throughout and it consumes about 220 watts. All throughout my shop, I have a bunch of different lights. As you can see over there in the back corner, we have more of a purple, they're called blurple grow lights. And I'm using a bunch of different ones such as the Barina. That's these guys up here. I've talked a lot about the 20 watt grow light by Barina, I really love that light. But today we're gonna go into all the different light types and the varieties that I have here and how to measure the light amount that you're giving your plants because that's really tough to figure out exactly how much light to give your plants, what color of light and what type of light you should be buying if you're using a grow light. In all the years that I've been growing plants indoors under lights, I've never actually measured the light. I've kind of always learned what the plant is telling me and always kind of just been able to eyeball the right amount. Also using the back of your hand technique is great. You wouldn't want it to ever heat up the back of your hand. And a good starting point is always about 18 inches to 24 inches away, especially for these larger high wattage grow lights. So since this is mostly experience based, I want to give you guys a tool that you can use at home that we can use kind of an equal playing field to see the quantity of light I'm using here. You can kind of mimic at home, use different starting points. So I downloaded a bunch of different light meter apps because in the front of the iPhone and most smartphones, you actually have a light meter there built into the phone. And the way you do that is by using a measurement called PPFD and you're measuring PAR. Don't worry about all these terms. Honestly, it's not worth remembering too much of them. Just know that PPFD is the way you measure the light that is available to the plant and photosynthesize based upon. Again, no affiliation here. I just downloaded a bunch of apps so you don't have to do it. I downloaded an app called Photon. It's essentially a PPFD meter in your hand. And all you need for it is a piece of paper. This is just printer paper. It's called a diffuser, technical term. Uh, with a piece of tape around it, you're gonna slide over your front camera. And then once you have your diffuser locked into your camera, super high tech, you are going to select the type of light that you're calculating. So you can either use sunlight if you're growing in a window, but I'm using a specific type of LED. Now, it's gonna try and get you to buy or upgrade the subscription based upon the different light source. I tested this already with the free ones that are included. For LEDs, that's the majority of grow lights you're gonna get off of Amazon. It's probably the one you have at home if you have one at home. But I have been using CFL on the free version. I bought the paid version just to check. So I set it on CFL and I'm going to measure my grow light here which is consuming about 220 watts under at the 12 inch mark. And now that I'm here, I'm getting in the center right around a thousand. To show you there's no difference between the paid version or not much, I'm gonna go back to full spectrum LED, go to the center at 12 inches, I'm getting right around a thousand, 1100 to 1200. Just to say, you don't have to buy the whole thing, you can do it because it has cool features such as the Kelvin temperature of your light, which is how pink that light is versus how cold or blue light are. The good way to remember it is it's inverse to what you would logically think, like the higher the Kelvin temperature you'd think would be a warmer light, but that's not true. The Kelvin temperature of my lights around here are around 3300, which is a warm light. And remember that warm light, like red light, stretches the plant's nodes more, and a bluer light, a colder Kelvin temperature, will keep your plants much more compact and create tighter internodal spacing. For rooting and propagation, I use a mix of blue, whites, and reds in for my propagation because I found that creates the best mixture and best kind of results for what I'm after in propagating. For the purpose of this video, I actually drop my light down a bit more. So actually above my canopy, my lights are about 20 plus inches away. But down here at my canopy, where it is right now, we're at about 280 PPFD. This is in a really good range for most house plants. As we get closer to the middle row of things where I have kind of my more valuable plants, we have the whip away here, we're at about 350, 380, 400, 
which is way enough. And honestly, you can really get some light bleaching on certain types of plants at too high of light levels. But a really great starting point for really bare minimum light levels is about 100 ppfd for house plants. So down here at the edges of the canopy in the darker spots further away from the light, I have about 100 ppfd on these edges. And you can see it's a bit of like a darker level. Here's 86 down here. And as many of you really observant viewers have seen, if you look up on my ceiling, I have light movers there actually. I'm making it so my lights are being pushed back and forth and it's spreading the light over the canopy and actually eliminating the possibility of bleaching. And as I'm growing these plants under the heavy lights, I'm always looking for different yellowing or chlorosis that could be if I'm giving the plants more light, I know I need to be giving them more fertilizer because they're gonna be eating and consuming more. So just make sure it's not bleaching along the edges of the leaf and make sure if it's chlorosis, I need to up the fertilizer amount. Over here, I'm growing some Paraiso Verdes from tissue culture and I'm growing them under three 20 watt Burinas. So my PPFD at the canopy level is about 100, which is what you want to see. As you get closer to the light, obviously the PPFD increases, and as you go away, it does also. There's a really interesting and probably important thing to mention here, which if you're essentially at one foot of light distance, and then you go to two feet of light distance, the quantity of light observed by that plant will become a quarter, not a half, but a quarter. So keeping your grow lights really close to your plants is very important. And checking the Kelvin temperature or the light coloring, we're at about 4,000. If I go towards my more blue light, I get towards 5,000. Since we're talking about color temperatures and quantity of light, this is super important, something I've been testing. And a lot of people on TikTok and other social media platforms have gotten really annoyed that I've said this and said it's wrong, but I'm testing it and it's confirmed by my test. So essentially, the light coloring that you're giving your plants should not be the same as their leaf color. These Florida ghosts are pretty white and light in color, much like the color of this light. Now, now, if you're to give a green plant like this green light, the plant actually reflects that light and doesn't absorb it. That's why cannabis growers use green lights in their grow rooms when they go in and work at the night cycle so that they don't disturb the plants and create hermaphrodites, which create seeds. These paraisos up here are fine to grow with these barina cool white lights because they're green. But if you grow a whitish looking plant under white lights, it will reflect that. Same thing goes if you grow pink plants under pink light. And pink light is just a mixture of red light and white light. I've tested this, I've grown these plants under this light, and then I've grown them under red and blue LEDs, and they do much better under blue and red LEDs. So when you're purchasing a grow light, it's super important to not look at what the grow light is being sold as, as like, I think this was being sold as a thousand watt, but what it consumes at full wattage, fully cranked up at 100% is 220 watts. That's what you always want to use as a apples to apples comparison those lights in the back those ones right there they consume about 20 watts each and as we talked about the long four foot tubes of brina also consume about 20 watts each this consumes 200 watts so it's 10 times more but it covers a very large area so this is the area that that one light covers and it goes on a mover and 200 watts to cover that is actually very good but the only way you're going to be able to figure out how much power consumption of a light is from the manufacturer's website so on the Amazon description or wherever you're buying the light from or use this really cool tool called a kilowatt and you're likely going to be buying an LED light when you're buying off of Amazon but make sure you're buying a decent light that actually has good quality because the way grow lights are considered in efficiency is how good it is at taking in the power it's consuming and turning it into visible light for the plant and that's typically done through usually having a really high quality diode so LED stands for light emitting diode. The little chips that are on each of the panel, there's a bunch of them, a few hundred on each of these panels. These ones are made by Samsung. The chip itself is made by Samsung. It's called the LM301B. But that's the most efficient one out right now to produce this style and quantity of light. And the more heat a light gives off, the worse it is at taking that energy consumed and turning it into light. So ideally, this light won't put off that much heat. And finally, let's go over light duration. I run my grow lights here on timers and I run them at about between 16 and 20 hours of lights on time. I found that that is the most effective way to grow foliage. Now that gets into 
the DLI and the daily light integral. It essentially is what is the aggregation of the PPFD that you give in your plant throughout the day. But 16 hours is a great starting point. You can go all the way up to 20 hours, but I do not believe in 24 hours on. That is too much light on. The plant needs to rest and kind of close down everything. So I know today's video has a lot of different information, but I hope I covered a lot of it. If you have any other further questions, leave them down in the comments. Let me know what do you guys think about this? Do you have lights at home that you don't know what the wattage is? Do you have questions? questions about the different colors of light, the quantity of hours, let me know down in the comments. I'm always engaging with people and talking just about growing plants down in the comments. So talk to me down there. It's always me responding and I try and respond to every comment. So thanks you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this type of video about lights and other growing technique, kind of the intricacies of this grow room, click the like button so I know what type of content you like. And if you want to come back every week for another video about plants, click subscribe and we'll see you next Saturday. Thank you so much for watching have a great day. Mm -hmm.